Hola, Jorge. Hola, Jorge. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm Gerardo. Thank you to accept the invitation to give a plenary lecture to this conference. Francisco will, will present, uh, uh, will be the session chair of, of the this session. Okay, Francisco. And now you can start to share your uh, slides, please. Good morning. I have the privilege of introducing you to our keynote speaker, Dr. Jorge Poveda. Professor Jorge is an outstanding leader in the field of automatic control. He obtained his master and PhD degrees in electrical and computer engineering from, from the University of California in Santa Barbara, USA, in 2016 and 2018, respectively. He also works um, as research intern at the Mitsubishi Electro Research Laboratories in 2016 and 2017. Subsequently, he was postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University and assistant professor at the University of Colorado in the USA. Since 2022, he has been assistant professor in the electrical and computing engineering department at the University of California in San Diego in the USA, where he also holds an affiliate appointment in the mechanical and aerospace engineering department. He is the recipient of various awards from the U.S. National Science Foundation, the Job Investiga Investigator Awards from the Air Force Office of Scientific Research and the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the Donald P. Ekman Award from the American Automatic Control Council, and the Best Paper Award from the IEEE Transaction on Control of Network Systems. Please join me welcoming Dr. Jorge Ivan Poveda with the plenary lecture titled Prescribed Time Stability in Switch Systems with Resets, a Hybrid Dynamical System Approach. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, do you hear me well right now? We can hear you very well. Okay, thank you. Yes, so thank you very much for the for the invitation. It is a pleasure to give this, this talk today. Um, I'm gonna talk about something called prescribed time stability in, in switched systems. Um, and one of the reasons I, I decided to talk about this subject today is because actually several of the key researchers working on this field are, are actually in Mexico. So we have learned a lot from, from those papers and from that work. So I, I thought that it was, a, it was an appropriate topic for this, for this uh, conference. So I'm very excited about this, about this um, area. All right, so let me start right away. So we are interested on control and decision-making problems with deadlines. Okay? So the key idea here is that a deadline is a specific time that is pre-specified by the user. And we need to solve a particular control or decision-making problem before that deadline. Okay? So the deadline could be maybe one hour, 10 seconds, one month, depends on the application. But the idea is that we're, we need to design these specific algorithms or controllers such that whatever is the task, we can actually solve it by the time um, pre-specified by the user. Okay? Now, this must be achieved irrespective of the initial conditions of the system. And I think that's actually the, the challenge. Okay, so we are essentially trying to achieve something like finite time or fixed time convergence, uh, where, where the convergence time is irrespective of the initial conditions of the system. Okay. All right, now, this is a very active area of research. It has been a, an active area of research for multiple years, decades. And, and in our lab, we're, we're especially interested on, on studying these techniques for dynamical systems that are hybrid, so that combine continuous time um, and discrete time dynamics. So switched systems, th those are a particular subset of hybrid systems. 
impulsive systems, uh, maybe controllers with resets or supervisory based controls, sample data control, event driven systems, and so on. These are examples of, of hybrid dynamical systems. And in general, these are architectures that involve if then rules. So we believe that these this if then rules are, are quite relevant in the context of, of autonomy um, for, for engineering systems. So that's why we are, we are interested on, on hybrid dynamical systems. Okay, so having said that, let me start with some motivational examples. So here's one toy example just to illustrate the, the idea of these problems. So we have a, a network system, a uh, small system for agents here. So each of these uh, circles represents an agent and, and this is a network. And the idea is that we would like to coordinate this multi-agent system to achieve some desired behavior again before a particular deadline. But we would like to achieve that goal under the condition that the communication graph is going to be dynamic. Okay, so we have a switching communication graph. So maybe at the beginning of, the, of our scenario, the graph looks like this. So agents can talk to the neighbors, uh, and that's the information they can use for decision making. But maybe after some time, that graph is going to change, and maybe the, the communication graph now is going to look a little bit like this. And again, maybe after some other amount of time, we may end up with this type of communication graph. Okay? So switching graphs in multi-agent systems is a fairly common scenario. Um, but the setting that I'm interested in here is when this switching is actually what we call a, a chirp switching. So chirp switching corresponds to scenarios where the, the frequency of the switching actually increases as we approach the, the deadline. Okay? So in this particular example, I'm saying that our goal is to coordinate the system before 10 seconds. Um, and as you can see here, what I'm, I'm showing in this plot is the switching frequency of the graph. And as you can see, that switching frequency increases as we approach the, the deadline. So these are called chirp switching, switching signals or, or um, chirp signals um, with, a, with an increasing frequency. Um, and they're quite challenging. They're quite challenging because in multi-agent systems with switching graphs, uh, when there is no commonly upon a function, then there is an underlying assumption that the graph changes slowly uh, with some kind of dwell time condition. But certainly this kind of, of chirp switching signals do not satisfy those type of constraints. Okay. All right. So again, the time that you see here at the end, that's the deadline. And our goal is to coordinate the system by that deadline, even though the graph is switching with an increasing rate. Now, each of these nodes in this system is a dynamical system. So just for illustration, maybe uh, we can have nonlinear dynamics, so maybe something like this, or N could be, for example, the, the, the neighbors, the number of neighbors of agent I, which is also gonna be dynamic. So there's a switching also vector field for each agent. Um, and each agent here has access to feedback measurements, maybe uh, of the relative distance to the design reference. Uh, with the restriction that this matrix BI is only positive semi-definite. So it is not positive definite, and that's going to be um, a challenge. Okay? So in that scenario, agents are going to communicate with their neighbors. And their goal is that uh, with, with the right communication protocol and the right algorithm, hopefully they're going to be able to all converge to a common point, in this case, in the plane, um, again, under this chirp switching graph. And I would like to emphasize agents must solve this, this problem uh, by the deadline, no matter what are the initial conditions of the system. Okay, so then the question here is, okay, how can we design a control law or a coordination algorithm that meets the deadline, um, always preserving a stability, even though we have this, this chirp switching communication topology here? And I'm gonna emphasize here that I'm not gonna make the assumption that we have something like a common react on a function. That is, that is typical in switching systems. Um, here, we don't have commonly upper functions. Okay, so just a preview of what we would like to achieve. So here are a couple of plots of, of the kind of behavior that we want to induce. So I have here four agents. Each of these trajectories represents the state of the agents. Each agent has, as I said, in the plane. So the first component, the second component, and we see that all of them converge to a desired reference point. In this case, it's just one and minus one by the deadline, which is again, 10 seconds, no matter what are the initial conditions. Okay, so no matter if I start these, these agents at minus 1000 or 1000, they should be able to go to the desired reference point before the deadline. 
And here in the right plot, I'm showing the orbital error of the system um, in norm and in a logarithmic scale in the y-axis. So this should go to zero. And as we see, the error is actually going to zero before the deadline, even though the graph is switching and the frequency of the switches is increasing. So this is what we would like to achieve. And, and my goal today is to uh, explain how this can be achieved for these types of systems. Okay. Now here's another motivational example. So it's in the context of control of systems under denial of service attacks. So in the context of cybersecurity. So here we have a plant given by this nonlinear system. Uh, we would like to regulate this plant maybe to zero or to some data reference value. And we wanna design a control law that is able to achieve that goal, even though we may have some uncertainty in this function. So maybe we really know some, some bounds on those functions and, and maybe some kind of uh, positive definite conditions on, on this, on this um, matrix B. And the challenge here is that we have this adversarial entity. You can think of this as an attacker or a malicious entity that sometimes is able to disconnect the controller from the plant. Okay, so we usually call this a denial of service attacks. And whenever the plant gets disconnected from the control law, then in general, this plant is going to be unstable. Okay, so we cannot uh, keep this uh, system or this control law uh, disconnected from the plant, otherwise the closed up system is, is just going to go unstable. Okay. All right, so the challenge here is now that these we want to solve a regulation problem here for the plant. So we want to stabilize this plant. Uh, also uh, in prescribed time, which means that again, we have a deadline, but as the deadline approaches, this attacker is able to increase the frequency of the attacks and also the duration of the attacks. Okay, so that makes this, this scenario more, more aggressive, I guess, from the adversarial point of view. Okay. So here's an example of a signal that represents the, the system switching between different modes, connected or disconnected. Uh, connected here will be the red mode, um, and disconnected maybe the blue mode. And as we can see here, the, the frequency of the attack is increasing as we get closer and closer to the deadline. And then the question again is how to design a control law and, and how can we characterize this type of, of switching signals such that the whole system remains remain stable, okay? Okay, all right. So again, as a preview of the behavior that we would like to achieve, this is what we would like to achieve. So I'm showing here uh, the trajectories of the plant in norm. So ideally they should go to zero in a logarithmic scale in the y-axis. And they are indeed going to zero. And as we can see here, the, the blue parts are actually when it is connected, the red part when it is disconnected. And even though the system is, is persistently being disconnected from the controller, we can still meet the deadline and regulate the system. And what I'm showing here in the orange trajectory is the kind of behavior that you get if you use a classic controller that is not based on, on meeting deadlines, essentially, like classic exponentially stabilizing control. Okay, so that one is not gonna work for these types of systems. All right, so now let me formalize this a little bit more. So this idea of, of designing systems that meet deadlines can be characterized by a stability notion called prescribed time stability. Okay. Now, in this context, or at least in this talk, I'm interested on achieving this property in switching systems with reasons. So switching systems will be characterized by a differential equation of this form where this vector field is switching and that switching is characterized by this switching signal sigma, which is a function of time, okay? Now, sometimes we may also have resets whenever there is a switch in the system. Uh, those resets are characterized by this reset map. So you can think of those as impulses or instantaneous changes of the state X and they occur whenever there is also a, a switch in the system. So these, these switching signals, sigma, they usually map to some finite number of modes, which I'm gonna denote by Q. And in this talk, I'm going to use modes that can be classified into unstable modes or unstable modes. So essentially we can only decompose this set Q of modes as the set of stable modes and the set of unstable modes. And that 
that, that the composition really forms a partition of Q. Okay. So usually this is a set of logic states. So think of those as one, two, three, and four. Maybe one is stable and maybe two, three, and four are unstable. That, that'll be one example. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna use this omega here to know the set of the switching times or reset times. So all the times T such that there is an instantaneous change in my switching set. Okay. All right. So going back to this picture that I showed before, uh, we can see here the set of modes that this switching signal can take. Uh, three modes, one, two, and three. Uh, sometimes it takes the mode one and two. Sometimes this it takes the mode equal to three. And in this case, I'm saying that the stable modes are one and two. The unstable mode is, is three. Okay. All right. So this is the, the type of systems that we would like to study. Uh, again, switch it systems with resets. And our goal is to be able to achieve something like prescribed and stability in these types of systems. Okay. So when when the problem of the consideration is characterized by, by a continuous time system, a differential equation, then there are actually several results in the literature that tells us how we can meet deadlines using what we call time varying feedback, time varying controls. Okay. So some of those results, for example, rely on the idea that you have a plant that has this type of affine structure. It could be maybe nonlinear, and, and, and this can be generalized to, to other scenarios. But the key point is that the feedback law that we use to meet the deadline is time varying. Um, by time varying, I mean that it's going to depend on this time varying signal mu. Okay? And you can think of that signal mu really as some kind of a gain, a dynamic gain that is used in the controller um, to increase how aggressive essentially is the controller as we approach the deadline. Okay, so in many cases, that state, that time varying um, signal uh, grows to infinity as, as we approach the deadline, as T approaches the deadline. Um, and that's by design. Okay, so essentially these signals are designed in a way that, that they grow um, um, as time approaches this, this deadline of slope. Okay. Now, the, the interesting scenario, or the, the interesting property of these controllers is that even though you have this setting of, of this signal going unbounded, under uh, an appropriate design of the feedback law, it can be shown that the control signal actually remains bounded for all time. So the, that doesn't go to infinity. And moreover, it can be shown that the state converges to the desired reference value as T converges to the deadline, again, independent of the initial condition. Okay, so now this, this idea, as I mentioned before, has a long history. Um, actually, the idea of, of prescribed and convergence and, and finite and convergence has a long history. So sliding mode control, for example, which relies on, on non-smooth dynamics has, has been studied for decades. Um, several key contributors are, are actually in Mexico. Um, Non-Lipschitz control systems also have been designed for finite time convergence. Uh, methods based on implicitly affine functions and, and so on. So these are all very active areas of research these days. Uh, there are other approaches that use power integration, um, other approaches that rely on or are inspired by missile guidance systems, especially from the Soviet Union. But in this talk, I'm especially interested on, on these approaches that use what we call dynamic scaling. So dynamic scaling, again, is somehow inspired by this idea of having this time varying signal mu that essentially grows and, and in some sense is gonna be used to scale the whole the whole dynamical system. And again, it's a very active area of research. Uh, many papers developed during the last during the last years in this in this area. Okay. Now there is this paper that was published seven years ago on Automatica that in some sense revived this this uh, approach of using time varying feedback. Um, and the paper pretty much formalized many ideas developed in the past by using uh, control theoretic tools and, and stability notions that are, that are familiar to us. Um, and also introduced certain interesting architectures and new properties that, that you can achieve with this type of, of controllers. And the idea that, that was presented in the paper, again, it applied to systems that have this form or maybe a little bit more general with some integrators, where X is a state, 
U here is a disturbance, alpha is a control law. And to regulate this system to a particular point of interest before a deadline, then the authors propose a time varying controller again, where the coefficient mu here has this particular form. So T here is the deadline. Um, and here, this coefficient mu had the property that at the beginning of the time, it is, it is equal to one. And as we approach the deadline, it goes to infinity. Okay. And it was shown in, in the paper that with this type of, of coefficient, uh, we can actually emulate stability properties that are typical in, in time invariant or maybe in time invariant uniform um, asymptotic um, stability properties. So for example, the notion of input to state stability that is, that is typically studied whenever you have disturbances, which is usually characterized by a KL bound of this form uh, with, some, with some maybe plus K function gamma here characterizing the, the neighborhood where you converge when you have a, a disturbance. Uh, that type of, of bound could also be achieved in the context of, of prescribed instability. And the difference is that the argument, the second argument of the KL function was now the coefficient and minus one just to remove this, this offset of, of one that you have at the beginning. And the key idea again is that as t minus t zero goes uh, approaches the deadline t, then this thing in pink color is going to go to infinity. And because this beta is a class scale function, then this whole term is going to go to zero again as t minus t zero approaches the deadline. Now, if you don't have a, a disturbance here, you, then this last term is not going to exist. And essentially, we are regulating the state x to zero before the deadline. So that was uh, an interesting and a very powerful generalization that was presented in this paper um, for, for prescribed term regulation. And even more interesting, it was shown that you can sometimes, you can actually design controllers that are able to completely suppress the effect of this disturbance that you have in the system. So in those cases, uh, a new stability notion or convergence notion was introduced. It was called prescribed time ISS with convergence. And here we can bound the trajectories of the system by a class K function here, where the first argument is pretty much the classic KL bound. And the second argument is again, this is scaling function mu and minus one. So again, as time goes to the deadline, to capital T, this term here in pink goes to infinity. And because of that, this KL function in blue goes to zero. So that also guarantees um, prescribed time convergence. Uh, but in this particular case, there is no residual term. So the input is, the disturbance U is completely suppressed. So it's a very powerful property that can be achieved sometimes by using this notion of, of time by infinity. Okay. All right, so this was developed for ODEs. So, and that, that was a very interesting contribution of this paper that has uh, motivated a lot of work in this, in this field during the last uh, seven years. Okay, so now going back to switching systems. So these are the systems of interest of this talk. So what I would like to do is to formalize something similar to a property, uh, but now for, for these types of systems. Okay, that, that's the idea. So, there are three main questions essentially that we would like to study. Um, how can we formalize prescribed time stability in these types of dynamical systems with switches and resets? In other words, is it possible to generalize this type of KL bound um, to um, switched systems with resets? How can we design controllers that are actually able to induce that particular property again in switching systems with resets? So maybe should we use the same coefficient mu? Maybe should we change mu? Um, those are some of the questions. And also, how can we characterize stability preserving chirp switching signals? So if this signal here in my vector field is, is chirp, the frequency of switching is increasing in time, then the question is, how can we study those behaviors while preserving prescribed time stability? Okay. All right. So the, the language that we use to study these, these questions is a language of hybrid dynamical systems. So hybrid dynamical systems, especially with inclusions, 
they subsume these types of systems that are a little bit more general. So they're very powerful to analyze to analyze those those questions. So I'm going to study then systems that have this type of form. And what I argue is that you can use this modeling framework to capture these types of systems up here. Okay? So this switching system with resets, they can be written as a hybrid dynamical system that has this type of a structure. So when you see a hybrid system of this form, there are four key elements. The flow set, C, which describes all the points in the space such that the system evolves in continuous time according to some flow map. The jump set D, which describes all the points in the space such that the system evolves in discrete time according to some jump map. Okay. And here, the flow map and the jump map are set value. And that's for the purpose of generality. And it's actually quite useful for, for switching systems. Uh, but I should also say that you can have hybrid systems where you get differential equations and difference equations here. So you don't have to worry about inclusions uh, necessarily. Nevertheless, Again, in the context of switching systems, it is very useful to have set value maps in, in these dynamics. And I will give some examples of why that is the case. Okay, so this is a picture of, of how we characterize or how we study solutions of hybrid systems or hybrid inclusions. Uh, you can start with some initial conditions shown here in the red dot. Uh, it's in the flow set, so you're going to flow until maybe you are in the jump set. And then once you're in the jump set, you are allowed to jump. So you might experience one jump, another jump, and maybe a jump back to the flow set, and then you flow again a little bit more. And if at some point you leave the flow set and the jump set, then that solution will stop and not continue on. So it's a quite general setting, and, and usually the fact that this intersection between the flow set and the jump set is not empty, that implies that usually we don't have uniqueness of solutions. So if you have an initial condition, that is in this intersection, then you can have solutions that start flowing and solutions that start jumping. So we usually have non-uniqueness of solutions. And that's okay. It's okay as long as we impose or characterize properties that hold for all solutions of this. Okay. So as I mentioned before, this language of, of hybrid systems can be used to study switching systems, again, impulsive systems, uh, reset control systems, or event-driven systems, and so on. Okay, now, again, the whole point here is we would like to incorporate if then rules in our feedback loss. And, and I think that's that's one of the powers of, of these systems. And in our context of switching set with resets, the if then rule will correspond to the switching signal, right? So if the, if the signal tells you to switch, then, then you, you need to switch um, your vector field and maybe reset your state um, if you have a reset map also in your system. All right, so this switching system then with resets can be modeled as, as autonomous hybrid inclusions. And, and that's my claim. So to formalize that claim, the key point is that we're going to model the switching signal as a state. Okay? So I'm going to call that signal sigma. I'm going to call it Q now. So Q is going to be a state. And Q is going to represent the, the switching signal. So during flows, whenever the system evolves according to the differential equation, this switching signal is constant, which means that Q dot is equal to zero. So Q again is representing the switching signal. So during flows, that state remains constant. But whenever there is a jump in the system or a discrete time update, then the switching, the switching signal changes to a different value. So the value of Q is going to jump to some other number that it belongs to the set of modes in Q that is different from the one that you have right now. And it is a fairly intuitive uh, dynamical system to capture to capture a switching uh, logic mode. Essentially. Now, when we combine these dynamics with the original system, then we ended up with something that looks like this. So again, I have now my continuous time dynamics, which is exactly what I had up, up here. But now I'm able to pretty much remove the switching signal by just using Q as a state. And then again, during flows, Q remains constant. And whenever there is a jump, I have now my updates here in the reset map, which is the same one that I have up here. And again, I also have jumps in my logic mode. Okay. So all I'm doing is writing this model in a different way using the language of, of hybrid systems. 
Okay. Now, when do we switch? Well, this hybrid system here is not telling me anything about when should I switch. I'm not, I haven't defined the flow set and the jump set. So to study when do we switch, we can use hybrid automata. Okay, so let me give you an example of this. Uh, typically, these automata don't use timers. Okay, so we're gonna incorporate another state into the system. And this state is tau. I'm gonna use that notation here. You can think of this as a timer. So during flows, this timer is gonna increase with a rate of one at the clock. That's gonna be allowed as long as the timer is between zero and some positive value and zero. And then once the timer hits that positive value and zero, we reset the timer to zero, okay? So what we're going to do is that we're going to interconnect this hybrid system up here with this timer down here. Uh, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a hybrid system where now the jumps are triggered by the timer. Okay, so now every time this timer, every time the state tau hits n zero, then I have a switch in Q, a reset in X, and also a reset of the timer. And because the timer is reset back to zero, then I'm back here in my flow set. So I'm gonna flow now for another amount of time until eventually my timer hits again n zero. Okay, so here in the left is a picture representing the evolution in time of that timer going from zero to n zero and being peri periodically reset. So this is a very simple example of how we can generate like periodic switching signals using these, these timers and, and these logic modes. Um, but what I would like to emphasize is that you ended up with a hybrid system here that is autonomous, it's time invariant. Okay, so all the information that you need to study this hybrid system is completely captured by this equation. Now, these type of switching signals are quite restrictive because they're periodic and usually we don't assume periodicity on switching signals. So we would like to have more generality on the type of switching signal that we generate in our system. So how do we do that? Well, that's where it might, it might make sense to use now set value maps. So, okay, so maybe instead of having this type of dynamics, which are the same that I just described before, where I have a classic clock with a periodic um, reset, then maybe instead of that, I would like to use a timer whose dynamics are characterized by a differential inclusion. So now I'm saying that the rate of evolution of that timer, which is tau dot, is anything or can be anything that lies between zero and one over tau d, and this tau d is a parameter. Okay, so zero is part of this set. It, it means that I'm allowing scenarios where the timer doesn't grow, it's constant, uh, but it can also grow, and the maximum rate of growth is gonna be given by one over tau d. Okay, so that's a, modification now of my simple dynamics that I have up here for the timer. And I'm also going to give more room for the resets of the timer. I'm not gonna necessarily reset back to zero, but I'm just gonna decrease by one the timer any time it hits the upper bound N zero. I'm gonna ask that N zero is bigger than one. Okay. So this is another dynamical um, system that we can use to generate um, timers that are more rich, and when we interconnect this type of timer with this type of system up there, then what I'm going to end up is essentially a switching system where the switching signal satisfies, for example, an average dual time condition, which is extremely common in the study of switching systems. And this type of condition essentially tells you the number of switches in any interval of time, T2 minus T1, is bounded by this quantity. So it is telling you that you cannot switch to past on average. And here's that switching signal that is illustrating that behavior. So we don't have periodicity anymore in the switches, uh, yet we have some, some regularity on those switches. They cannot happen too frequently. And again, that is characterized by this average load and condition, which again is induced by the structure of the dynamical system that I'm using in my terms. Okay, all right. So now we can actually consider more general timers if we want to impose stronger conditions on my switching signal. For example, suppose that I would like to also limit the average activation time that I spent on the unstable modes, okay? So how can I do that? Well, what I can do is I can incorporate an additional timer, which I'm using here, um, tau two to denote that timer. And that timer is going to essentially keep track of whether or not you're using a logic mode that is in, that is in an unstable mode using this indicator function. 
Right? So you know, trust me here that we can prove that any solution generated by this type of, of hybrid system will give you essentially a switching signal that satisfies not only the average dual time condition, but also an average activation time condition on the amount of time that you spend on the unstable modes. Okay, so this is very useful. Again, if you wanna limit the amount of time that you spend in the unstable mode, which is typically needed for the purpose of, of analysis and control systems, switching control systems. Okay, so all of these are just examples of how we can design switching signals using autonomous hybrid dynamical systems and the power of having inclusions in these systems. Okay. All right, now, it turns out that hybrid systems are actually quite useful to study prescribed time stability. And one of the reasons is that the solutions of hybrid systems are actually defined on hybrid time domains. So what I mean by that is that when we plot the solutions of this hybrid system, we usually differentiate the continuous time domain from the discrete time domain, which I'm going to represent by J here. Okay. So what that means is that if I plot a solution that is flowing and jumping, flowing and jumping, we keep track of the number of jumps in a different axis. So in this example that I'm showing here, we have a hybrid system that is generating some solution for some initial condition that is flowing at the beginning, eventually experiences a jump, then flows a little bit more, then jumps, then jumps, and then flows. Okay? And then again, it gives me a trajectory that is, and is graphically similar to what I showed before, but here in this 3D representation, Again, we differentiate the continuous time axis T from the discrete time axis J. And because of that, the, so the solutions of this system are indexed by these two numbers, T and J. So for any T and J that is in the domain of the solution, you can evaluate the value of, of this function. Yeah, and that will be these this gray curves that you see that you see down. One. Okay. Now, hybrid systems again can be quite general and they can generate different types of behaviors. Uh, as I mentioned before, maybe you have a very simple timer that is inducing periodic jumps. Um, so that'll be not very interesting. So flows, jumps, flows, jumps, flows, jumps, flows, jumps, and, and they're periodic. Or maybe you have average dual time constraints in the jumps, such as those that I, that I showed before. Maybe you flow, jump, jump, flow, jump, jump, flow, and so on. Uh, or maybe you have this, this very common case of having Zeno behavior, where essentially you're flowing and jumping, but the amount of time that you spend flowing is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking to the point that eventually you converge to an accumulation point where you essentially jump, on the jump. Okay, so that we call usually that Zeno behavior. You may have situations where the system stops jumping and, and becomes continuous after some time. So you have some flows, jumps, flows, jumps, and then you just flow, whatever. Or maybe the opposite, maybe you flow, jump, flow, jump, flow, and then you just jump forever. So it becomes a discrete time system after some time. Or again, maybe you have a solution that stops and that solution stops maybe because it left the, the flow set and the jump set. So it's not allowed to evolve anymore. Okay, so all of these are different behaviors that can be generated by hybrid systems that have this type of stuff. Okay, all right. So, now that I described the language that I want to use to study prescribed time stability in switching systems with resets, which is this language of hybrid systems, and that I hopefully convince you that I can transform this system into um, a hybrid inclusion of this form, then I can reformulate the three questions that I mentioned before, now in the context of hybrid systems. So the first question now was how to study prescribed time stability now in hybrid inclusions. So how can I formalize these type of bounds for this type of systems up here? How can we design controllers that induce convergence with deadlines in hybrid inclusions? So can we generalize this type of feedback loss? And also, how can I model chirp switching signals using hybrid inclusions? So maybe I can find some timers with some dynamics that, that somehow generate this type of chirp switching signals with increasing frequency of switches. Okay. All right. So to give an answer to that question, we focus on this type of hybrid inclusion. So it has a specific structure. The main state of the system is Z, and Z has two components, psi and mu k. Mu k is going to have the same role as in the classic uh, designs. So you can think of mu k as a time bar gain. But I'm going to generate that state or that signal using this autonomous system. So it's a differential equation. 
I mean, it's a differential equation with a power here. And because k here is bigger or equal than one, then it turns out that this differential equation, the one that characterizes the dynamics of mu k, is going to generate finite state times. Okay? That's a property that we're going to induce from this system. And then I'm going to have the dynamics of the other state, which is psi here. And that is probably the state of the plant, maybe also of the controller, if you have a dynamic controller. And those dynamics, in some sense, have this form. So you have some mapping here, f, and it's going to be multiplied by this gain in, in front, by mu of k, which again is the same state generated by this, by this autonomous um, OD. Okay. So during the jumps, we're going to have no changes of my state mu k, so that doesn't change. And maybe some resets characterized by this mapping g of psi. Okay. So those mappings f psi and g psi are application dependent and they will be specified later. So at this point, I'm just interested in characterizing the structural properties of these types of hybrid systems. Okay. And the key distinction of these type of systems is, of course, this, this state mu k which is gonna play an important role. And as I mentioned before, the dynamics of that state are essentially continuous and dynamics that are governed by this differential equation. Now that differential equation for any initial condition bigger or equal than one has finite state times. In fact, you can compute the solutions of that differential equation. Those solutions look like this. And the finite state time is precisely gonna be epsilon, which is our deadline. That's gonna be our, our um, deadline, and we're going to be able to control that deadline by tuning the parameters of this differential equation. Okay. So here's actually the specific um, formula for the deadline. It depends on this constant t and depends on the initial condition of the differential equation. Once you fix those two parameters, you get a deadline and you have solutions here for the differential equation that blow up to infinity at, as time approaches that particular deadline. Okay. So just to give more intuition, if I plot these functions mu k for different values of k, where k is also a tunable parameter, then this is the behavior that you get. As you increase k, you get essentially more aggressive controllers. So more aggressive um, signals that are diverging faster. Uh, for k equal one, you get this, this blue behavior that diverges um, uh, when you get very close to the, to the deadline. And in, okay, in this case, I use t equal to mu zero equal to one. All right, so the key property that we're going to show is that if you rescale this ODE up here by the state mu, in other words, if you divide this vector field by the state mu, then you end up with this rescaled differential equation. And this rescaled differential equation does not have finite escape times. So all solutions are actually bound. And that's just because, again, by rescaling, you're removing this one or removing some of the coefficients um, from up here. And you ended up with something that, that behaves in a, in a nicer way. At least it doesn't have finite escape time. Solutions are always bounded. I mean, they increase as time goes to infinity, but they do not have finite escape times. And I'm going to call this differential equation up here the blow up of the E because solutions blow up as you approach deadline. And this differential equation down here as the rescale blow up of E because it has been rescaled by dividing the differential equation by the state. Okay, so going back to the system of interest, again, these are the hybrid inclusions that we're studying. So as I mentioned before, this hybrid system has a finite escape time at the deadline time, and that's induced by the dynamics of mu. There's nothing we can do about that. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is that we're going to use that signal to scale the flow map. Okay, so I'm going to consider a hybrid system that is very similar to the one that I have up here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the whole flow map by the state mu. And I'm going to use hat here just to emphasize that these are different systems, but with the same elements, same flow map, same jump map, same flow set, same jet set. I'm just changing the name of the state. Okay, so this is a rescaled version of this one up here. I'm just dividing these continuous and dynamics by mu. Okay. And we're going to see this as a target system. Okay. So this is a target system uh, for us. And, and, and it will be clear why I'm calling this a target system here. And something that I should emphasize is that once I do this rescaling by mu, then I'm removing essentially the finite escape times from the differential equation of mu here. 
And then at the end of the day, I'm also removing this menu that is in front of this Wildmar X side. So then this hybrid system down here will not have final escape times if that mapping doesn't generate final escape times. Okay. Okay. So now we have one result, or I guess our first result. And this result essentially says that there is an equivalence between the original system, which I'm showing here in the red box, and the rescale system, which I'm showing here in the blue box. And that equivalence essentially says that if you have a solution of your original system in the red box, then that solution is also going to be a solution of my blue box if I stretch time. And if I have a solution of this blue box, then that solution is also going to be a solution of this red box if I contract time. So in other words, there is a dilation and contraction mapping, which I'm going to call tau k, that you can use to transform solutions from the blue box to the red box and from the red box to the blue box. And what this essentially is doing is that is contracting and dilating only the continuous time scale, the hybrid time domain of the solutions of the system. Okay, so if you think about that, in this red box, I'm going to generate solutions that they all have, again, final escape times at the deadline. So when you apply this time dilation, you ended up with a hybrid system whose solutions now don't have that final escape time in the continuous time axis anymore because I'm stretching that time axis to infinity. Okay. So that's this is a key property that, that we established for this system, that there is this nice um, contraction dilation property that you can apply to the continuous time axis of the hybrid time domains of the solutions of, of the system. So it's a little bit complicated, but in words, say the following. Again, for every solution of the blue box is a stretch version of a solution of the red box. And every solution of the red box is a compressed version of a solution of the blue box here. And this stretching and compressing is only happening in the continuous time axis of the hybrid time domains. Okay. So the key implication of having this property is that if the solutions of the blue box converge as time goes to infinity, as the continuous time goes to infinity there, then the solutions of the red box will converge as t approaches the deadline. Okay. So this gives me essentially a methodology to study prescribed time stability in hybrid systems. It is essentially telling me, look, you just need to guarantee asymptotic convergence as time goes to infinity in the blue box. And then that would imply prescribed time convergence as t goes to a deadline in the original red box. So we formalize that methodology um, in this setting. So we have our, for example, one of the motivational examples. And what I would like to do then is to somehow find some homeomorphic transformation that puts this system into the form of the red box. And then I know that this red box is in some sense equivalent to this blue box after I stretch or compress time. Then after doing that, what I can do essentially is focus my attention on the blue box, try to establish some asymptotic stability properties for the blue box, again, as time goes to infinity. And then that would imply that the red box has prescribed time stability properties or prescribed time convergence properties as we approach the deadline. And because this was a homeomorphic transformation, those stability properties would also be transferred to the original problem of interest. So this is the methodology that we advocate in, in this in this result, by dilating and contracting hybrid time domains, um, we can establish that prescribed time convergence property by focusing our attention on this blue box. Okay. So now to formalize this methodology, I actually need to define what I mean by prescribed time stability in hybrid systems because I have not defined that notion. Okay. So it turns out that the stability notions for hybrid systems are very similar to those that we have for ODEs. So for example, the classic asymptotic notion of, of input to state stability in hybrid systems also has this type of shape where the bound on the distance of the state to some bizarre set is precisely some kind of KL function or KLL function plus some residual term that depends on the disturbance. So this KL function here has three arguments. First argument is the distance of the initial condition to the set of interest. Second argument is time, continuous time. Third argument is discrete time. So as t or j go to infinity, 
this function beta is going to go to zero. So this is the classic asymptotic notion of, of ISS or input to state stability. So we introduce equivalent notions for prescribed time for the hybrid system. And it turns out that all you have to do here in this type of, of, of um, applications is that we're going to pursue bounds where instead of working with the classic time t here, we're going to work with this modified time here through this mapping tau k. And this mapping tau k is the same mapping that is inducing the stretching and compressing of the continuous time axis of the hybrid time domain. Okay. So those notions of prescribed time ISS and prescribed time ISS with convergence that I studied before for ODEs can be generalized to hybrid systems just by inducing or by adding this contraction dimension mapping in the continuous time axis of, of, of the system. Okay, so now we have our main result, which says that if the hybrid system in the blue box is ISS, classic ISS, so asymptotic, with respect to some closed set, then the hybrid system in the red box will be prescribed and ISS with respect to the same set. Okay. Now, the specific design of this homeomorphic transformation and the specific design of this red box is of course gonna be application dependent. So we can now revisit some of the motivational examples to see how we can apply this type of structure. Okay. So here's my first motivational example. I had a multi agent system with four agents with a graph that was switching and, and the frequency of switches was increasing. And I have some dynamics for nonlinear dynamics for the agents. Okay. So, okay. So, how can I capture this setting? Well, what I could do to generate these chirp switching signals is I could start with this model that I showed before that describes classic switching signal that satisfies the so called average dwell time condition. And so, any switching signal that is generated using this kind of automaton interconnected with the dynamics of Q is going to give you a, a switching signal again that satisfies the ADT condition, the classic average dwell time condition. Well, if that's my blue box, when I go to my red box, my red box is multiplying the flow map by this coefficient, this is state mu. So it turns out that when you do that, then the type of switching signal that you get from this red box now are actually going to satisfy this type of bound that I'm showing down here. And it turns out that that type of bound is precisely a chirp switching signal. It means that as we approach the deadline, this bound actually goes to infinity. So the number of switches allowed between the interval T2 and T1, any interval T2 and T1 actually goes to infinity as we approach the deadline. In other words, this red box is giving you a mathematical model to generate chirp switching signals. And I'm showing here different examples of the kind of behavior that you get when you use different values of K in this, in this type of systems. So now we have a model that can generate chirp switching signals. Okay. All right, so now I can go back to my dynamics of the multi-agent system. So now here are the orbital dynamics in the hybrid setting. I have my flow map, dynamics of the plant, dynamics of the logic mode, dynamics of the state that I'm using as coefficient, and dynamics of the timer that I'm using to generate these this chirp switching signals. I also have these three time dynamics. My plan doesn't change during jumps. I have switches of the graph whenever there is a jump. Mu k doesn't change during jumps. And tau again is reset by one to generate the, these chirp switching signals. All right, and now I can design a particular control law. In this case, for example, we use this control law um, to achieve the desired behavior. There is some kind of consensus mechanism going on and some, some kind of functions of interest here. And here's my coefficient in front multiplying the whole vector field. And it turns out that when you substitute this feedback flow into your closed loop system, you end up with something that looks like the red box. Okay? So this will be somehow like my, my homeomorphic transformation. And now that I have something that looks like the red box, then I can focus on the blue box. And the blue box is just a rescaled version of the red box. And in that blue box, when I analyze that blue box, I can actually use Lyapunov functions to show that provided this dwell time tau d, so this coefficient up here, is sufficiently large, then this blue box actually is stable. It's asymptotically stable. As s goes to infinity, we will have convergence. Then we can invoke our theorem, and that will imply that the original red box will be prescribed time stable. And additionally, we can actually show that the control law here remains bounded for all time. Okay, so this is how it looks like. These are the same simulation that I showed at the beginning. Trajectories converge to so is our target before the prescribed time. 
this switching signal is generated by this hybrid system using again this chirp switching signal model and we see convergence where these are target even though the graph is changing topology and that frequency of changes increases as we approach the data okay now the other application that i that i showed at the beginning was in the context of prescribed and regulation so we had this attacker that was inducing these dos attacks okay so in this case then i'm going to follow a similar approach but now i have to limit the amount of time the switching signal is spent in the unstable modes which is under attacks so i described this model before this is the one that generates the classic average dual time condition also this activation time condition on the amount of time you spend on the unstable modes so this is a classic model that is used in the literature well what i can do is then use now this red model so again the, the model in the red box essentially multiplies the flow map by this state mu k and when you do that it can be shown that the kind of switching signal that this model generates satisfy the chirp switching condition from before but also now some kind of chirp activation condition so we are now increasing times of activation in the unstable modes as we approach the deadline and that's characterized by this bound down here which is a bit different from what we had before so here's an example of how those signals look like so here's the evolution in time of tau one and tau two and as we see as we approach the, de the deadline the attacker is able to is allowed to um increase the frequency at which it switches the attacks okay so in this case we can consider again some particular control law uh, what is important here in this control law is that the coefficient is in front here of the control law and when i compute the closed up dynamics of my system and then with some expression that eventually it can be shown that it has this particular form again i can put the system into the form of the red box and then i can focus now on the blue box structure and for the blue box structure we can show using the no functions that there exists a sufficiently large tau d and tau a so the coefficient will generate the switching signals such that this blue box would be asymptotically stable and now i can invoke theorem 2 and that theorem says, all right, now that you have that stability property for the blue box, then you get that for free for the red box in prescribed time. Moreover, we can also prove that the controller remains back here. So this is how it would look like in simulations. Uh, we see the evolution in time of the states going to zero before the prescribed time, the deadline. And again, the uh, switches are allowed to increase in frequency as we approach the, the deadline here. I'm also showing the evolution in time of the control law, which remains bounded for all time. Okay. All right. So I have two minutes. So let me let me conclude and also discuss some important caveat here. So what I did here is to introduce prescribed time stability and prescribed time ISS for hybrid systems. Um, these analytical tools are developed by essentially applying dilations and contractions to the high return domains of the solutions. And, and these tools essentially parallel the existing results for ODEs. So that was our goal, to be able to generalize the results from ODEs now to hybrid systems, to, to, to be able to, to include switching systems, systems with resets, and so on. Uh, these tools can be quite useful for the solution of control and decision-making problems with deadlines. And as, as a consequence of these models, we ended up also with new types of, of chirp switching signals that can be stability preserving uh, under prescribed time feedback. And I will emphasize that this methodology can be also used in other types of hybrid systems, logical automata, event driven systems, and so on. Now, limitations. So, these feedback loss based on increasing gains actually are dangerous sometimes. They can suffer from robustness issues, they can amplify noise and, and, and things like that. So, if you have uncertainty in the dynamics and you don't know bounds on, those, on, those, on that uncertainty, then that can be amplified by these increasing gains, and that's a big critique of this method. But uh, also, it might be difficult to actually implement this in practice, sometimes it's impossible, because you have actuator constraints. So you will have some saturation on your control signal. So even though it is bounded, it might be too aggressive at some point, and it will saturate. So how to handle that is, is, a, is a challenging problem. You might need very high precision discretization routines to actually implement these techniques. And there are some recent works on using implicit discretization to, to be able to preserve some kind of practical or semi-global uh, prescribed time convergence. 
And I should also mention that this, this type of problems with deadlines can also be solved using other methods. Okay, so fixed time stable control, for example, have been developed during the last decade also. Uh, there's a very active group on this in France led by Napoleon Kopp. And also I think in Mexico here, a professor Jaime Moreno has been working on some of these methods on fixed time stable controllers using ideas that are connected to uh, sliding mode control and super twisting dynamics. So I, I, we do not advocate for one method over the others. I think all of these are, are interesting mathematical methods. Uh, we're interested in formalizing and understanding their mathematical properties and limitations, and especially in the context of hybrid systems. All right, and with that, I would like to finish. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, to reach out to, to my email. And this work was funded by National Science Foundation and also the Air Force Research Lab. Um, in the US, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any question? Jorge, in, in your lab, uh, do you have some experimental setup, setup uh, to evaluate the performance of this uh, methodology? For instance, elect power electronic devices, electric motors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we tested our our motivation to study this method actually comes from a collaboration with industry with Bosch from a few years ago. The setup there was to solve estimation problems, parameter estimation problems for batteries. So they had a classic least squares approach that was extremely slow because the data that they had was not rich enough to give them the, the speed of convergence they wanted. So then we start investigating whether these non-smooth or time varying or hybrid techniques would actually improve transient performance. And we found that for that particular application, there was a significant improvement in using this type of non-smooth or time varying techniques. Now we do not, we have not tested these techniques in mechanical systems or electrical systems. And I am always um, cautious about those, those applications. Uh, I know the stories of, of, of these discontinuous controllers breaking motors and transistors uh, and things like that. So that's why I think that so far our, our focus is more on, on decision-making problems and maybe control problems based on estimation or adaptation. Great, it will be, Jorge. it will be, however, just, just to finish, it will be interesting, however, to test this, some of these experimental methods just to see, um, you know, what is the outcome. Thank you. Any question from the people online? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for the interesting topic. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's a, a very challenging problem because uh, a lot of applications where you can apply the approach. Uh, I mean, electrical systems, electrical vehicles, uh, networks, communication systems, and so on. But uh, my question is, uh, what about when when the the number of uh, subsystems is uh, huge? Uh, how can the the theoretical approach can be deal? Uh... That's a great question because we're actually working on that. So there is a very interesting question because when we have a large scale system. In my opinion, yes. it's not it's not going to be feasible to use a single dynamic game for the whole system because you will need a central state that controls all the network, all the nodes, and that's not feasible. So, what I would like to to be able to to achieve is to have a decentralized approach to generate this this coefficients mu, so that every agent can have its own coefficient mu, and use that yes. to scale its own controller. So, for that, we will need to coordinate the the final escape times of, of all of those agents. So essentially, we will need some kind of consensus mechanism where the agreement is on the final escape time, and I think that's that's the key block that we that we need to develop for that for that setting. And, and what is the connection with with your also part of your work uh, by using machine learning techniques? Uh, I mean, for robots, uh, drones, uh, or UAVs or vehicles. Yeah, because you were talking, you were talking in the last ACC about some connection between uh, machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence applications with the in the context 
with the traditional control algorithms. So what about that, please? Yeah, right. So there are different ways in which you can incorporate those, those mechanisms. So there are, one way is in the context of, of course, learning mechanisms. So you want to learn a model or a parameter or a function. So you would like to train a model and maybe gradient descent can be quite slow. So you want to speed up that mechanism. So then these accelerated methods can be useful in that, in that regard. But the, the other one that we're exploring these days is on perception-based control. So when you have applications that require vision-based control cameras in the loop. So in that setting, we train neural networks, maybe convolutional neural networks or transformers. They will give you approximations of states. And then those approximations of states can be fed into closed loop systems. And then hopefully you can use that for the purpose of control. However, I have not combined those techniques with prescribed time control. The reason is that I'm cautious about these robustness challenges that we have when we do prescribed time control. For example, one question that I have is if you if you use some of those perception-based techniques that always are going to give you some errors, I don't want to amplify those errors using prescribed time control. So and you know, we need we need some kind of safety guarantees to to be able to do that. And, and we're working on that, but we don't have results on that interconnection. Okay, thank you. More questions? Thank you. I have a question. Uh, can this approach uh, be applied in in a splice site, for example, in a circuit uh, or a high speed circuit? Uh, digital designs. Uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, often problems in convergence uh, with DSP working in parallel. And can this solve this problem? Well, I'm not, I'm not familiar exactly with the problem at hand, but certainly there are different techniques, techniques that can be used to speed up rates of convergence. And, and I know that a well-established approach to improve transit performance is, for example, reset control. Uh, if you have issues with overshoot, then reset control can definitely work, or at least it should be tested because it's, it's a technique developed to precisely to handle overshoots. To improve transient performance, like fast convergence, uh, that's a bit more challenging if you have dynamics in the loop, right? So, yeah, I'm not sure if, if this technique will, will immediately apply to your case. It is worth exploring. Uh, also, the other techniques based on, on, on fixed time control that use superlinear and superlinear feedback and, and integrators with powers. I think those techniques can be explored um, to improve transient performance. I think. Okay, Jorge, thank you so much for this very interesting uh, lecture. Uh, bye bye. See you later. So, thank you, Jorge. Thank you for your contribution for the conference. And we hope to see you sometime here in Mexico City to, to collaborate or to discuss uh, because in Mexico, the, uh, we have many groups here in Mexico City and the National Polytechnic in Simbestab, in UNAM, and Ensenada, uh, Nuevo León, Mexico has a, a, a huge community in doing automatic control and also many people working on theoretical uh, control theory and, and this kind of aspects. As you mentioned, uh, Professor Eversida is professor here, is part of our group in mechatronics. And Dr. Jaime Moreno uh, uh, works in UNAM, the national University uh, here in Mexico City. So some people is, is quite interested. Julio Orloff is professor in Ensenada, Baja California. Uh, they were working on distributed systems, switched systems, hybrids, uh, uh, sliding modes, and so on. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you uh, soon here in Mexico. So. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, yes. And, and I agree that, that Mexico has a really strong, strong community in controls. It's quite fascinating. And I learned a lot from these papers. Gracias,